And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce our first speaker, who is uh, Christian Kletner. Christian Kletner is from uh, BASF Ludwigshaven, and he will explain more about his role there. Um, but if you have not been to the plant, it is probably the most, uh, the largest and the most integrated chemical plant in the world and uh, a, a, a spectacle you won't forget if you ever visit it. Um, Christian will be representing a, a presentation that, uh, that, that was given at the Namur annual meeting last November. And my European ARC colleagues pointed this out to us who were in attendance at the meeting and said, look at this, I think we should uh, uh, present on this at the forum. So Christian was kind enough to come over from Germany and, make, and uh, revise this presentation and uh, present it to us. So Christian Kletner, BASF. Yeah, hello, welcome to the presentation regarding Namo Open Architecture. Um, my name is Christian Klettner, working for BSF in Ludwigshafen. Um, within BSF, I'm um, responsible in a senior project for all the digitalization efforts currently driven by BSF. And um, within Namur, I'm chairing two working groups for um, automation architectures and wireless automation. And, um, before I start with the presentation, um, some background information on Namur for those of you who might not know Namur. So we are an international user association of automation technology and process industry. So this is a very exclusive club because only end users allowed. Yeah? We allow a few system integrators, few academics, but mainly end users. Nevertheless, we have a very, very close collaboration with our automation vendors. So because only together you can drive successful implementations. Our vision, leading international association for automation techno technology users, and our mission is clear. We want to provide value for our members, provide guidance for new technologies, and help them yeah, to understand new technologies better and come up with recommendations on how to use them and also establish a strong voice towards our suppliers and have a good discussion base. Some facts, yeah, Namur is quite, um, has quite some history, founded in 1941. Um, about 150 member companies, mainly German-based, but also some international uh, companies we have um, one annual meeting, 650 participants, so quite a huge event comparable, comparable with the ARC forum in, here in Orlando. Um, we have about 40 working groups, which is quite huge, dealing with all different kinds of topics along the life cycle of uh, our production plants. And of course, we have very strong collaborations all about the club with different associations and also with the ARC, and um, I'm very happy today um, that I can present our ideas on open system architectures, and um, when Harry approached me, I thought this is a great opportunity because there are many things going on, many discussion. We heard this morning from Don the ideas from Exxon about open systems. So I think it's good that we align on those topics, and. Um, Thanks again for the, for the invitation. For me, it's a pleasure to be here and to give you our ideas on open system architectures. So let's get started. Um, I started at BSF 20 years ago as an electrician. Yeah? And one of the first things I learned is that we have quite some life, long life cycles in our plant. So I was working in a plant which was partly still running on pneumatic controls. Yeah? So very old technology. So this was the first thing, long life cycles. And this plant was about to get migrated to a DCS system. So second thing I learned, very painful to do migration. Yeah? Lots of effort. But I also learned that we need safety yeah, that's, that's our biggest goal, reliability and availability. And therefore, we need structures in automation. 
And I think today we have that. Yeah, we have the automation pyramid. You can see on the slide where we have a, a proven and widely accepted structure, highly available, and of course supports our long asset life cycles. And to be very clear on that, we cannot risk to lose all this advantage. So our current structures have their benefits and we have to maintain this. But of course, there's also a downside. Today, our system architecture is not open at all. Yeah, so we have very closed system. If you want to extract information out of those systems, it's quite painful. It takes a lot of effort. And new technologies are, are integrated slowly or not at all. Yeah, take Fieldbus, for example. I mean, honestly, not much of our plants are running on Fieldbus installation today. Most of the plants are still on 4 to 20 milliamperes. Yeah, because implementing the technology is quite complex. And this complexity, you can directly translate into costs. Yeah? And that's why we're not doing it. So this is really a showstopper for many good innovations in the past that it's just too complex to integrate this into our existing structures. And of course, due to our high requirements, which are there for a reason, I'm not even questioning that, we have no room for trial and error. If you want to try something new, some innovative approach, usually you just can't because it's too complex. Yeah, you have to be compliant with everything. So in our structures, again, this is not possible. And within Namur, we had a lot of discussions about that and ask ourselves the question, are we losing track of modern technologies? Are we get, getting left behind in automation? Because we see a rapid development outside of automation technology. So innovations from IT are approaching us with high speed. And there's no way to stop this. So we have a very positive cost development on sensors and communication technologies. We have IoT, big data, cloud, mobile devices, you name them. And this is really approaching us with high speed. And we have to find a way to deal with that. So for us, the question, are we, or how can we remove the break block? How can we be more agile, more innovative, without violating our basic pillars of availability, safety, reliability? And therefore, we discussed an approach which should be additive to existing structures. A structure that allows an open information exchange out of our classical process control and a secure backflow from an IT environment into our process control. And this needs to be additive to existing structures, open for new approaches. Um, here you see the buzzword industry 4.0. That's quite a huge thing in Germany. So this describes basically um, our digitalization efforts. Everything we do needs to be based on existing standards because that's also learning. Um, automation is not really successful in standardization communication technologies. Yeah, we are just too small for that. This should be done by IT and we need, we need to learn how to adapt those technologies in our environment. Simple integration, and of course with that we can use the significant improvement of cost per sensor. And again, I'm, I think I will repeat this quite often during this presentation, we cannot afford any risk on our installed base. Yeah? So process control core remains untouched, but we have to find a way to enable all these new technologies without violating that. So we came up with an approach, we call this NAMO Open Architecture, which comes on top of our existing structure. And um, you may ask yourself now, what's the difference between what Don described this morning and also what Steve will talk about later and the NAMO approach? So basically, if you look at the pyramid, the approach driven by Exxon is really aiming for the core process control. Yeah, to open this up, to make this more modular, more flexible. 
And our approach is creating an additional structure to deal with everything which is out of process control. I will show another picture that um, will make it a bit clearer. So again, our process control and beside process control, we will find other domains and we call this monitoring and optimization. We have one which is plant specific, so all the services which are directly related to a plant but not responsible for process control. Monitoring and optimization only. And of course, overarching um, domains, central monitoring and optimization. This could be um, optimization which are not directly related to a plant, but also in, in, um, if you think a little bit further, um, applications which are connecting your owner operators also to suppliers and so on. So we have our infrastructure, yeah, core process control, well known, <coughs> applications here and there, and now we need to discuss, and this is the, the key point of the normal open architecture, how to transfer this information. So if you look at the picture now, first thing, we need to discuss how to get the information out of the core process control to proceed it in a more IT-related environment. Best case would be we have an open interface, OPC UA, for example. If we would have that, this problem would be solved very easy. Unfortunately, today we do not have this in all our plants, so we also need to consider how to access information on our field devices. Funny thing here is, this idea is not new. Yeah? As I said, yeah, I'm working for BSF for 20 years, and I think um, at the first years, I also learned about HART and FSK and how to extract additional information, but today we are still not doing it because it's just too cost intensive. So we have to find a way on how to extract also information from existing field devices. And here you see also a, a data direction control this, of course, relates to security. This needs to be secure. We have to make sure that there is no unauthorized information backflow from the plant-specific monitoring optimization domain into the core process control. Next thing, we have to build a room for all additional sensors. So everything which is now advertised within industrial IoT or IoT and this needs to be independent from, from process control. This is very important because the availability of such systems might be lower and you cannot mix it up. So you have to be cl quite clear between those two approaches. And we have to consider that. And those sensors need to be cheap, easy to deploy, and easy to manage. And of course, we need a controlled backflow from an IT environment into our process control. And we call this here the verification of request block. And this is a mechanism on how to control the information. And this could be very simple. Yeah? Right now, we do not have the technical solution yet defined. But this could also be a human who's doing a plausibility check if the information that he receives from his uh, monitoring optimization um, domain really fits and makes sense. And of course, if you if you involve, uh, evolve that, this could be more fancy or more automated. So this is the structure, and again, the axon-driven approach is really targeting on this side, and we are describing with the NAMO open architecture approach all the communication relations outside the core process control. Core task of process control, I think I do not have to explain to you. It's like tracking water to the ocean. Um, but of course, also here, even though this is not key focus of NAMO Open Architecture, I would like to mention a few points where we still need development. Yeah, we need to create in the core process control area open interfaces, for example, OPC, OPC UA. And we have to drive the development of IP-based field bus technologies. And the verification of request block I just mentioned on a previous chart. So 
core process control, the gray world, will remain for our safe and reliable plant operation. And the monitoring optimization will give us room for all these new innovative technologies. And I'm really, I'm, I'm a strong believer of, of the separation of those two worlds because we need to do that. We cannot try to bring all together in the core process control world because the systems are not ready for that. This is too much information. That's why we have to distinguish in, into these two worlds. So we need an open application platform to enable the use case for best-in-class application and platform independent interfaces for to the process control domain. So the monitoring optimization will be our baseline for the actual development of innovative applications. And again, yeah, this is the most important message. The core process control domain must remain. Yeah? We cannot violate all our baseline pillars. Yeah? So availability, safety, reliability must remain. If you talk about the monitoring optimization domain, there you can measure on a different scale. Yeah? If you create applications in that area, you can create them in a way that they might deal with the lower availability. That's not an issue. If an optimization system fails, your plant can still keep running. Yeah? It's not the end of the world. But also availability of IT systems. I think we have to be very clear on that. The availability of IT systems, this could be our future benchmark for, for availability. If I look at BSF, if our ERP system fails today, this has a huge impact. It's, so we are, our IT systems today are professionally managed systems. So in future, you might not even be able to distinguish in terms of availability between an automation system and an IT system. So these two worlds will really converge. And of course, how to, where to place the application? This needs to be decided case by case. There is no general recipe on which application belongs to the monitoring and optimization and which application belongs to the process control. And last but not least, it's um, the point which, which is, um, I think, one of the most important topics we, ha we have these days, security. Now, we need to make sure that security by design is implemented in both approaches for the core process control and for the monitoring and optimization part. And this might even in future make things easier because today we have kind of an overloaded, overloaded core process control and maintaining the security there, it's very complex. We have 20 year life cycle, maintaining security, it's a pain, yeah? And if you have more IT based systems shorter life cycles because you have, do not have to deal with all these long life cycle issues for your monitoring and optimization system, managing security might become doable. So this, this is a positive side effect. And at the end, why are we doing this? Yeah. Creating all these architectures, having all these discussions. Of course, this is not for technology's sake. It's very simple. We want to increase the throughput of our plants. We want to reduce the costs. So our drivers are creating values and producing at best costs. And as I said before, in the past, we already had very good ideas on how to optimize our plants. But the problem always was we have an idea, but no economic efficiency. Yeah, for example, the extraction of hard data out of field devices. That's not new, but in the past, this was just too expensive or too complex. That's why we did not do that. And with the technologies we have today, we can make this innovation really possible and we can really create value. And I want to give you two very simple examples, not rocket science. First one is Additional measurement for process optimization. Prediction of the fouling of a heat exchanger. 
technically, it's very simple to do that. But if you look at our plants today, most are not instrumented to really derive this information. You know, if you have a greenfield project, usually you have you know, budget cuts in, 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 um, in CapEx. So those are the, the sensors you, you scratch up from, from the list. So usually you don't have them. If you want to do it later in a brownfield, it's just too expensive, it's too complex. And benefits are there. I mean, for example, yeah, the, the falling prediction, of course, if you can predict the falling, you can adapt your maintenance cycles and so on, increase transparency, you can just operate your plant in a better way. And the interesting thing is, those sensors, they have very low requirement in terms of availability. And they don't need a direct connection to a DCS system. You can connect them directly to your optimization tool. So Namo Open Architecture really shows a path for, on how to deal with all those additional sensors. Yeah, and again, our, our architecture draft. So very simple, you can either derive the information directly from the field device or from, from your system, or you can use additional sensors without connecting it to core process control. Next example, plant asset management. Today our huge machines, heavy duty rotating equipment, is equipped with sensors. Yeah, this is durable, you, you can buy them from the market, it's not, not a problem at all. But we're talking about the Internet of Things. So each thing in our plant should be connected somehow. But how do we want to do that today? There's not even a concept on how to do, that, do this in an ec economical way. Because if you have a pump, which is a quite cheap and standardized equipment, you cannot invest a lot of money for additional sensors, wires, and so on. So you need to find a cheap and economical way to do that. And with Namo Open Architecture, again, we are describing structures which will enable us to do this. And uh, therefore, we, we found uh, the working group um, last year, early last year. And um, it's quite interesting because we have um, four of the leading German universities um, for process automation, end users, and also guests, from, uh, one from Exxon, and also from um, Bundesamt für Sicherheit, this is the, yeah, somehow equivalent to um, Homeland Security here, so dealing with all the all, um, cyber security and automation security issues. And um, first question we ask ourselves, how are we going to, to tackle this problem? And usually, um, the traditional way of doing that was we write down our requirements in a paper and create a specification and so on. But in this working group, we choose a different approach. So each of the four universities created that demonstrator with existing technologies which fitted in our, infrastructure, in our architecture. And with these demonstrators, we established kind of a scrum approach, as we know it from IT, with, with trial and error. And this was very important for this fast development of NOAA, because we did not just discuss it on a theoretical level, we really discussed it based on implementation done by the universities. And um, I think they did a great job. Yeah, in November last year, during the NAMO annual meeting, we showed all the four demonstrators. They were running, not perfect. But this is okay. Yeah? We do not aim for perfection here. We want to create some agility to overcome all these, these problems. And we do not want to have this, this mode anymore of creating lots of specifications and throw it over the fence to the vendor and wait what's, what's coming back. And I think this is a thought we can also adapt in, in other domains. Yeah? We, we need to be faster, we need to be more agile, and we need to find a room for trial and error, because otherwise there's no chance that we can, we can keep up with the speed 
which is currently happening in the IT environment. So our guiding principle, key requirements again, if we talk about NAMO open architecture, there will be no compromise on blunt safety and blunt availability. We need open interfaces between process control, monitoring, and optimization. The approach needs to fit for new plants. But even more important, this also needs to fit for existing plants. And this is really where, where our, our pain today is. Yeah, it's the existing plants where we are not able to implement new innovative technologies. And therefore, we have to find the solutions. We need to do an agile implementation based on existing standards, not reinventing the wheel. Take what's already there. And today, there's almost everything in place. We just have to plug it together and give it the structure. And of course, automation security must be an integral design aspect. And usability, reduction of complexity, complexity and economic efficiency are the main success factors. And with all that, we have some sort of a missing link. Yeah? Because again, digitalization, industry 4.0, all these initiatives is bringing automation and IT closer together. And we have to make sure, we the automation experts, we have to make sure that we set the stage right to allow all this innovation which is coming with high speed from IT in our plants. Not blindly. Again, this also needs a structure. And implementing the structure, NOAA is one approach. And again, here the missing link. And yeah, I think NAMO Open Architecture really offers a basic structure to unlock the potentials of digitalization and industry 4.0. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention.